Good morning, everybody. I stand in front of you as proof that God does have a sense of humor. When I was a teacher, one of the things I told my student teachers was when they came to see us was when they were watching me, that they ought to be thinking about, man, when I get the chance to stand up in front of the band, I'm going to do X, Y, or Z. And we've had some excellent speakers during the stewardship time. And dummy me, I was sitting up there thinking to myself, man, if I ever got the chance to do that, I'm going to da 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 I didn't say it out loud, but God actually heard it. And he said, yo, big boy, we're about to find out about it. <laughs> And I don't know if I should have my feelings or hurt or not. Zach this morning said that you asked him a month ago. Yeah. And I got an invitation this Wednesday. So I don't know if I really ought to have my feelings hurt about this or not. Um, it's, this started out at half an hour. Andy, uh, Keith's got his watch on. He's going to let me know when I get to 20 minutes. So um, when we moved to Ridgeland from Quitman in the summer of 2002, we were lucky because we already had friends here in, in Madison County. Some of those friends were Frank and Patty Bonner. I grew up with them in Starkville, and they were and are still members through the internet. Hey, Frank and Patty. And they suggested that we come here and check it out. Scott and Sandy Maynard were also friends from Starkville, known them my entire life, and they brought the um, Created by God classes that we had here, and they taught them for a couple of years here. They recommended that we came here. Keith had the misfortune of working with me at Ridgeland and he also suggested that we come and we looked at a couple of different churches and we finally came here to St. Matthew's. The choir was my primary concern. It was excellent but let me tell you what that dude Steve Castile that boy could talk and I was super impressed with him. Then we went to Wednesday Night Live. We wandered in, we looked lost because we were lost but within seconds who could find us but Rayford Wood Woodrick. Was there a better person ever to find us? And the cool thing about it was that I didn't even know, he knew my parents through the connection of band. Instant connection, instant home. During that whole time, somewhere along the way, I think I emailed Tim about our being interested in coming and sing, or maybe I said something to Keith about warn Tim, we, go, we want to come and sing. Or knowing me, I dreamed that I actually warned somebody that we were going to show up and try to sing on a Wednesday night. So we bopped into choir, and choir had already started, and we stood there, and Tim looked over at us and said, can I help you? And I said, in my typical dorky fashion, we're here! And he said, okay, who are you? In typical Tim fashion, Grace kicked in in a hurry, he grabbed his shuttle to see in got us hooked up with all the books, and that was the last time that we looked for a church in Madison County. Cadden and Jace, our two boys, were one in three when we moved in here, and they were like raising bear cubs. And Dot and the ladies in the back took tremendous care of them, and I know that Wednesday nights got really long while Mom and Dad sang, but we are forever grateful for the impact and for their grace of time and energy with our guys while Mom and Dad got to do the thing that they did serving and loving to sing in our church. We joined a Sunday school class pretty quickly after that. We made lifelong friends, friends that we still have today. More connections were made. As we made all these connections, there was a distinct feeling that St. Matthew's was a place where all are welcomed. There was a feeling of non-judgmental grace. There was a feeling of being in service. There was a feeling of purpose with the missions that go on the South American missions, the missions to forest, birthday gift for Christ, Christ covered, the tremendous work that Kay did with congregational chair and with the leadership of Steve Castile, this place became home to us. As I mentioned, our boys, Jason Cadden, were raised in this church. Nothing, nothing was more important than the impact of this church on our guys. They were given a foundation that they've taken to this day and made mom and dad pretty proud, proud of the people that they've become. There were some interesting moments along the way. There was that time on Wednesday Night Live where mom and dad turned their back on them and they decided that that was the time that they were gonna go walk around Wednesday Night Live and solicit funds for a fence to go up in our backyard so that they could get a beagle that mom and dad said that we couldn't get because mom and dad weren't building a fence, but they were gonna go raise the money for the fence. There was that. And then there was the time 
that the cherub choir was singing up here and Jace decided that he was hot and he was going to express that loudly for everyone and try to take his shirt off in the middle of a cherub choir performance right before the children's choir. You didn't kick us out. You showed us grace <laughs> for that moment. And you also gave us the chance to sit in the office with Kim Parker while they professed their Christian faith. Gets me now. Few things have moved me more. My mother used to come and hear our choir programs. And you were always incredibly generous with her, even when she sat in your chair. She loved coming to hear us. And when my mom died, you were there for us. When we moved to Florida and Amy's dad died, even though we were still in Florida, you were there for us. You set a standard that other churches couldn't meet. When we were in Florida for those seven years, we never found a church that we could stick with. And not because they were bad people, but because you set a standard and we wanted every place to be St. Matthews. There was no other Tim Rigby. There was no other St. Matthews. And when Amy said I could finally quit, not have to teach anymore, we flirted with going to Oxford. That lasted about 10 minutes because we knew where we were coming. We were coming back home. And we came back home just in time for COVID. What a tremendous time, right? But we've, we really could never have had a better place for this. During, during that time of COVID, Andy and Tim and the staff here did incredible work to keep us all connected. And you got to know that didn't happen everywhere, but it happened here. It happened in this home. And now we find ourselves in another unique time. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but we've kind of been through a little tumultuous time here recently. And that's, that's left us with some holes. But we stayed. Those of us in this room, those of us on the Internet, we stayed. This place was important to us. This place is our home. We stayed, and we have the opportunity, after we've gotten finished with all that other garbage, to go back and to be who we say we are. We get to be the place of grace. We get to be the place of welcoming. We get to be the place that loves each other. We all recognize we're on the road. We all recognize we're on the road to the same place. My road may look a little different than your road. My stops may be a little bit different than your stops, but we're all headed to the same place, and I love the grace of this room that allows us to do that. We also have this time where it's time to step up. With those that left, there are some holes. To be sure, there's a financial hole, and it's notable. If you haven't made a financial commitment before, before, let me encourage you to make one. If you have made one, then maybe there's a little bit more you can do. As a popular podcast that Andy and I both listen to says, the answer to all your questions is money. And to be sure, that's true. But there are a thousand other places where you can plug in too, as you can see in Hart Hall. You'll note that our choir is a little smaller than it was a couple of months ago. It's crazy for me to say because I was afraid to sing growing up. I didn't do it. I was a drummer. Drummers did not sing. Don't tell me about Don Henley sing in Hotel California. I was a drummer and drummers didn't sing. You strike me more as a Karen Carpenter story. Well, okay, Karen Carpenter. I didn't know that stuff. I was a hard-headed drummer from Starville, Mississippi, and I didn't sing. And uh, to compound that, the last two classes I took in college were speech and voice. Ron Vernon said, Jay, if you don't take these two, you ain't going to graduate. I finally gave up and took those last two classes the last possible time that I could. It's really ironic because I'm standing up front of you here talking to you with a choir robe on. Choir became the thing that brought me into a church and kept me into a church. And it's my way of being, this is my service to the church. Our choir has gotten a little bit smaller. If you've ever had an inclination, the slightest inclination of singing, man, we'd love to have you. There's not an audition. You don't have to pay a fee. We won't make you sing a solo. We just want you to come in a room with us. There's nobody like Tim Rigby. Nobody. And the people in the room also are pretty okay also. We'd love to have you if you thought about being in choir. There are a thousand other things that go on around here too. Our children's choir. They need people also. You don't have to sing. You don't have to dance. Those things certainly help. But if you just want to come and help them be with the children's choir, that's a thing. Some of the most important things happen in this church are our children's Sunday school classes. 
They need teachers. And they really need enough teachers so there's a rotation. That's there for you. Our youth at this point are facing incredible, inexcusable pressure from outside. It's inexcusable. And if you're watching me, I'm telling you, and it's inexcusable. They need you. And you don't have to go in and do anything other than to let them know you're in the room. But you need it. You're needed in a thousand different places in here. We have many people needs for leadership. We have needs for participants. Now's the time. Now's the time for us to live in to this opportunity. There's some holes, but we're here. We kept this church going, and we're going to keep it going, and it's going to take us to make it go. Live into that. Let's show the world what God means to us. Thank you.